really, I can't point out one in particular. Just growing up on the farm, I always wanted a horse because I had a friend just a short place away and she had a horse. I wanted a horse. But my dad said, no, they, it'll just break down the dikes and they eat too much. So, no horse. Mom and Dad knew I was lonesome out there on the farm because I wasn't near any of my friends that I had in school. But we all went to primary together after school on Wednesday. And in the summer, they used to not have primary in the summer or Relief Society. They just turned everybody out. And I was so sad because I loved to go to primary. And I, I, anyway, I really like primary and I liked school. I loved school because it was an opportunity for me to be with my friends. And that was one of my favorite childhood events, I think. My mom made fudge. We didn't buy candy because in the war years, there was a sugar shortage. My family had plenty because my dad raised sugar beets. We had plenty of milk, cream, butter, all the things that other people were being uh, rationed with. But anyway, mom made wonderful fudge. She was an amazing cook. And that, I wasn't, introduced to any other candy for a long time. But when mom made candy, it was special. Well, what I, most memorable thing, and what influenced me the most, is the patriotism of the people. Everyone just did their share. They put up with uh, rationing tires for your car, gasoline, shoes, just about everything. But we were lucky because we had cows. We had all the dairy products we needed. But I was just uh, kind of, I don't know how to say this, in love with the whole thing. Being a child, you know, it was just exciting with the soldiers and all the women went to work, riveting in the plants. And, but what impressed me most was the patriotism and that people didn't grumble. They just wanted to do everything they could to help. And I had an uncle, Garth, which is dad's brother, that served in the Air Force. And so that just made me proud, you know. I thought it was so cool to have a uniform and you know how little girls are so <laughs> impressed, but it was a special time, and I remember it well. I always said the reason I have good teeth is because I didn't have so many sweets. I didn't have just what my mom made, and it was good stuff. <laughs> oh, I just admire her so much for her housekeeping. She was very particular. There was never a mess, Every, and yet I'd see her when I'd come home from school and she'd be reading the newspaper. And I thought, well, she doesn't have much work to do, I guess. <laughs> but there was something else I wanted to say. Oh, we lived in a two room house with no plumbing. No, well, we did have electricity, but no plumbing at all. But it just seemed normal to me. I, it was a way of life, and I dealt with it. One day I came home from school, and my mother was very meticulous. Everything was in order and clean and in its place. And I came home, and she had the curtains down, and chairs and furniture had been moved, and it just upset me. But she was doing spring cleaning. So she didn't get it all done by the time I got home on the bus. <laughs> and I, you know, it just, I had such a secure feeling about my home and how it was taken care of 
that when I walked in and saw the blinds down and the curtains and yeah, it shocked me. I didn't feel like it was a happy thing. <laughs> well, I keep recalling what he said to me. He didn't talk to me as much as as others. I've learned a lot by speaking to others. But he was very meticulous as well. His potato rows had to be the straightest. He couldn't couldn't handle a and then, and then potatoes, we had to heat, uh, weed them. And he didn't want a single weed in his potato patch. He was meticulous. And I got to thinking the other day how many times he helped me and did things for me. He built a platform on the back of my bicycle because I played in the band. That's where I learned music. And later I was in the high school band when I was in the eighth grade. But anyway, to get there, he built this platform with straps on the back so it hold my saxophone case. And then there were straps to fasten it. And I rode that bike, let's see, three times a week, two and a half miles, one way, so I could go to band. I loved band. And, what, and when Jerry and I were first married, Jerry always wanted to be a farmer. He loved farming. And there happened to be a piece of ground down the road from where we lived. And he'd made good money on the potatoes the previous year. So he said, why don't you use all my farm equipment and rent that? Because that'll make you some money. We needed money, of course. So using my dad's machinery, because we didn't have all that equipment, but he was generous and thoughtful and kind to do that for us. Well, it turned out the ground wasn't very good that we had. And the price fell that year. Dad had made good money on the, on the potatoes the year before. But that didn't work for us. I think we made enough money to pay for the potato digger. But that was hard. That was a bad start because we had to hire to get the crop out and then the price of the potatoes was terrible. That's what happens when you farm. Good years and bad years. When I was in the second grade, mom and dad decided they should go to California because my grandma lived there and my grandpa. So I usually got car sick for some reason. I think because my mother did, I did too. But I slept most of the way to California so I could visit with my grandparents. And that was, you know, I had my mom and dad all to myself and other good things happening and we took pictures. So that's one of the things, just one, that I remember when I was seven. <laughs> well, that would be George and Donna, because they were closer together in age. And I babysat, because Mom and Dad both had church positions, and they had to go a lot at night. So I remember taking care of them and reading to them, and it was like I was a part of Mom and Dad, a team, and then these were the kids. That's because there was this big space and I felt like I was part of the nurturing and parenting, just like they were. <laughs> but it was fun. Those little girls were really fun, my little sisters. And Gary was just a baby, so. He didn't believe I was his sister and he got older. Graham, my mother said, that I was his sister, and he said, no, she's not, but we've made up for it. We're close now. Oh my goodness, Carol Casper. We were, she was really smart and cute, and I felt like, I just remembered this today. We were, uh, maybe she wasn't competing, but I was, and uh, I wanted so much to paint with my crowns, a picture better than hers. 
and I just did my best, and I still looked at hers and thought hers was better. I could sm spell really good, and I would be in spelling bees. They don't even have those anymore, I don't think. But it always ended up with a boy in the class, Dennis Birch, and myself, and then we would compete back and forth, back and forth. And I missed diphtheria, so I left a letter out or something. And so I was out, he won it. Then it was like the grade, eighth grade something. It was really sad. I felt bad about it. And I did really well till I got diphtheria and then that was it. I remember that really well. And I used to read a lot because I was just out there in our home by myself and everybody else, but I would check out a library book every night. Of course, they weren't big, big books like we read now. And then I would read it and take it back and check out another one the next night. One day, Mom was trying to explain something to me and I couldn't get it. And she finally says, I guess if I wrote it down, you, you would be able to read it and do it. But she, uh, she told me she all, I always had my nose in a book. But I was alone. So that's how I spent my time. I think my favorite tradition was going to my grandmother, Lewis. We always go to, went to her place and had a nice dinner, and then we opened gifts. And then we would still had a nice that it was just something I really looked forward to, and I always remember going to Grandma's on Christmas Eve. It was amazing. Just something we did on a regular basis, <laughs> always. Oh my gosh. When I was growing up, women didn't work, and I thought, well, I could be a nurse or a school teacher or maybe a stewardess on a airplane <laughs> and I didn't end up doing any of them but that's what little girls dream of I guess I didn't want to be a nurse I didn't want to be a teacher so I went into the secretarial business I guess you'd say had lots of jobs where I used the skills I learned in high school I even had a job in college, and I had to keep bugging them and saying, I can do that, I can do that. And they didn't think I was old enough or smart enough, I guess. But I finally got a job, so that was good. And what was your job? Secretary. Oh, that's right. Where'd you work? Uh, for a professor in, I uh, can't remember the building it was in. Anyway, it was good. I did think about my dad more. He didn't show affection a lot, but he really looked after me. The year, first year Jerry and I were married, they gave us a quarter of a beef. I don't know what we'd have eaten without it, but I knew he loved me and wanted to do all he could for me.